Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Civilization VI. And today we are making a beautiful empire. We are filling it with forests, we're making national parks, and we're making friends on the world stage. We're trying to be the good guys in history, okay? We don't want to burn the world down with industrialization. We want to make it beautiful. In the same way that your mom is beautiful. Now, the city of St. Louis has its work cut out for it. I think I'm going to go ahead and place a preserve. I would also, I think I would like a holy site and a theater square in the city. I think I will prioritize the theater square first, like that. Uh, so I'll get that place. But we're going to work on the preserve. I think I think the preserve is the more fun kind of building. Um, I also would like a holy site in here, probably like there's a good holy site. Um, now, I also think that I need to get builders over here. Like, I mean, there's a lot I need to do and to get around to. And I just, you know, this cost a lot of builder charges to get this all going here in the center. But, you know, it was super worth it. And as a new wave of builders continues to make its way across my continent, our tiles will get better. We're kind of, we're just, we're at like a, um, what's the word? We're, we're at like an, an industrial limit, an, an economic limit. We're like at a, um, a capacity limit. There's only so many tiles we can improve so quickly. Um, I will go ahead and build a quarry there because I do want access to another gypsum because I do plan to de-improve this gypsum here. And, and really, I think, you know, we're, we're cruising at this point. We're, we're at the point of the game where we have achieved all of our major infrastructure goals. And we're just, you know, we're, we're making cool stuff. We have access to radio now. So we are going to want to rush film studios as fast as possible in most of our cities. Um, but, I, you know, I think it's more fun to build the preserves first. So that's what I've been working on because preserves are kind of neat. Um, I just, you know, I just think they're neat. I think they're cool. Um, I definitely need like a whole bunch of builders over here, but also the cities of Velatre and stuff like that needs work. I like, I like harvesting things. I like putting, I like putting new pieces of work down. I like to get things improved. There's another national park. Kaboom. Another three era score. Cracking away on those bad boys. I, I'm really, really enjoying the whole process of like just placing down more and more national parks. God, I really just do not have enough. <laughs> I just really don't have enough builder charges. The problem with this kind of game is that it's a very low production kind of game. And so you end up in a scenario and a situation in which you don't really have, I think that's a farm right there. And then if that's a farm triangle, so if that's a farm triangle, where is the city's um, national park going? That's a bit of a problem actually, because I want a national park in every city. And if this is where the farm triangle is going, Maybe the city just doesn't have a national park. Yep, the city just doesn't have a national park. That's fine. We could do other things like lumber mills, all that sort of jazz. Um, if this city's not getting a national park, then I think we can safely do this. This wants to be a lumber mill as well. This wants to be what it is. This probably wants to be a lumber mill. So there's a little bit of work going on over here. Otherwise, I think the city, we could just, we could just do more farms. A whole host of farms in Velatrade to grow it nice and big. He wants to buy my gypsum. I think I would rather sell that for a higher price. There we have Baltimore has finished its sanctuary. Now, let me see. Do I want to yoink? One, two, three. Yeah, okay. So it looks like New York has so much culture that's kind of expanded the tiles that it can't use. So that's going to mean that we need, we need to like, we need to like rein it back in just a little bit. Like, hey, these aren't your tiles anymore. Okay. You, these are not your tiles. Let me uh, double check this again. So we also don't want him to want this tile. And that, and that happens sometimes. It's part of the game. Uh, cities will overgrow their borders, essentially. But we got the Sanctuary in Baltimore, which is a significant amount of production for all the cities around. That's so great. I don't think in this particular city, like, the, well, I guess it is a four production adjacency shipyard and I can build it in eight turns. Eight turns is a really good pace for that. And then we can get to work on, let me see, how, how close am I to? It's probably worth it to get a few archaeological museums this game. God damn, is this really getting 38 production from worked tiles? That's a lot of damn production in this city. Jesus Christ. Um, I'm impressed. So we've got 38 production in here. I think we do get the shipyard and then we head straight for the film studio. Now it's a question of do we want the archaeological museum or the art museum? And I think in this particular city, I'm going to go for the art museum so I can start buying and filling out art from other players. Let's continue to steal tech. I'm really enjoying this. This spy is doing great work in terms of tech stealing. Unfortunately, I do think, I guess I could technically dework the iron, but I will keep it for now as I continue to try to just like carpet improve my territory. Now you were trading with... I actually don't remember who you were trading with, but maybe it's time. So we're trading with Vietnam, France, Canada. Da, da, da. So we've already got to trade with, with, with you. Who else could I reach? It might be possible for me to reach. What if I put the trader in Rome? Maybe there's a small chance we can reach um, Byzantium. I would like that. 
If I could reach Byzantium with my trade routes, it would it would be a significant improvement in my game. All right, Byzantium, he's denouncing me. It's like half of the world absolutely loves me. Like two, three quarters of the world loves me. And then there's like that one like small quarter to a third that just like absolutely hates my guts. Um, so we got the arena in Washington. We also want to place the um, theater square here like so. Um, so I'll quickly get the zoo. If I'm thinking about a minute, thinking about yields here, a zoo in a stadium is pretty based. As is a neighborhood, do I want to keep growing the city? I don't really have a lot of food. Well, actually, the food in here is incredible. I'm completely wrong. Where is the city getting its food from? Oh, my God. There's so much food. Holy crap. Why does the city have so much food? Well, um, in that case, the city has a huge growth potential. So, like, a neighborhood is probably a totally fine thing to place here. So, yeah, I think I would like to get a, a Tempe complex and my theater square up. I think I will go grab the, well... I don't actually think I need the amenities because most of my cities should be full amenities right now. So I think I can go for the theater square and build up the film studio and get that little bit of extra tourism. I, this is, this is honestly, this is one of the most satisfying ways to play the game. Just purely placing down all the cool yields. Ah, I can't reach that. But if Byzantium kills Buenos Aires, then maybe I can trade with Byzantium. For now, trade with Antium, I think. If we trade with Antium, it's a relatively short trade route, and it might give me just enough range to touch Adrianople um, when this trade route finishes in 42 turns. I still, I think every time, I know this comes up like literally every single game, okay? I get it. It comes up every game. They need to, they need to, um, oh my god, they need to, uh, they need to, they need to make traders move faster in the late game. It needs to be. It just it needs to happen. It 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 just it's it's insane that they can't. That they go so slowly. We're six turns from the Eiffel Tower, which is an exciting prospect. And I'm continuing to plant forests just everywhere, just everywhere. We are the great wild wilds of America. Uh, we have access to Cold War, and there are a few cards in here which could be really useful. Notably, Containment is quite good, as well as Rock Bands are useful. I don't think I'm going to be using many Rock Bands this game. I think I'm going to primarily be focusing almost all of my faith production into producing um, more national parks, because I feel like as America, you just get so much value from national parks. I will put a ski resort there, because it's kind of cute. Um, you just get so much value from them that it's hard to... Um, it's hard to, like, entertain a different proposition, you know? Let's go ahead and harvest that sheep. I don't need sheep no more. Okay, there's something screwy going on here. Yeah, it looks like Kume has, like, squeezed its borders through these two cities, which is not ideal. But I theoretically, I could settle a city down here if I wanted to. If I wanted to take advantage of, of these extra lands, I probably could. And uh, I might want to settle up this land here soon, because it's going to become a higher value for the AI to do such a thing. So maybe... Maybe next... Uh, next government, oh, did I buy the sanctuary in here? I think I did. Maybe next government I will, I will go through and grab the, um, grab the settler card and start just, you know, cranking, cranking out a few extra settlers. There's the archaeologist. There's quite a few archaeological dig sites around. Um, I think I do want the film studio in Mediolanum. And I also need, I need, a, I need more builders in here, like really. Um, honestly, Aquilia, you just can't build builders fast enough. And I should totally get the film studio in here as a priority. And I never got, like, my National History Museum. I need my film studio, I need my National History... And I, it's probably... Yeah, it's time to cancel out the builders in here. Ostia, you've built a lot of builders. I need to just go around and, like, build a builder in every city, I think. Ostia has built enough builders, in my opinion. Um, and it needs to work on its grove and its sanctuary and its theater square. So we'll get that going. Um, this builder is heading down to Mediolanum. Now, one question I have is, I do have room for relics, but I don't know if I want to be buying relics. They can get a little bit expensive. I'm also burning most of my income right now, and that's because I need to at least have positive income, I think, just so I don't get screwed, so I'll sell off some of my luxuries. Also, I have literally billions, billions of Diplo favor, okay, here. 349 gold per turn for Canada for a thousand Diplo favor. Hell yes. Alrighty, money problems solved. Um, that's a lot of money per turn. In fact, that might that money might see us through to the end of the game. Uh, so if we're looking at the city of New Orleans, let's just go builder, builder. Two builders, and I think that city will be finished. Looking at the city of New York, I think one more builder, and then the city will be finished. Uh, Detroit, you can't afford to build a builder. Go ahead and build a grove and sanctuary. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the city is like working improved good tiles. And I think preferentially, 
oh man, I need just like a little bit more appeal in here. That sucks. Eh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I think lumber mills are like really, really good value. We have a ton of farms, so we can kind of work a little bit more on the lumber mill side of things. Farms and lumber mills. It's like a, it's a fun combo. Uh, Kelly over here, go ahead and harvest that artifact and a Vatican City artifact. Yes, that weirdly painted painting that uh, everyone is familiar with. Uh, let's see here. You want to trade one for one? No, I'm good. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Demagogue. Uh, heavy industry. Apparently I'm satisfying everyone's agenda right now. I guess everyone just is a big fan of potato right now, which, you know, I'm totally on board with the, the love of potato right now. Uh, things are looking great in Chicago. These are very work. Let's make sure what in the name of unholy Christ have you done Vietnam? Okay. I, this is, you're, you're, you're insane. You're insane, Vietnam. How long is our alliance? Our alliance ends in three turns. She just gifted me a city. Um, I, I am going to take that city because... What, <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing here? What, what, what did you think would happen? What, what was the expected outcome here? There's no way this ends well for you. But regardless, um, I guess that city is settled now <laughs> by my ally. My ally is gifting me cities. Um, you need two builders. I know I may overbuild builders here a little bit. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with overbuilding. You don't need a builder. You need a couple builder charges, which means you can probably safely build a settler. I need to get my amphitheater and stuff up. Recruit a great rider. Boom. Uh, so we got our great rider. We just send it straight over here to start producing great work for us. And in Washington, we have finished our theater square. We can also get to work on our amphitheater and all that jazz. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get the appeal. I guess theoretically there is a higher appeal area here. You know, if I plant forest and stuff. Yeah, you know, let's do it. Let's make it higher appeal. Nah, yeah, we'll do one lumber mill. Sure. We'll do a lumber mill. Paul has just been doing work over here, stealing tech after 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 tech. After tech. Just so many. Uh, you have no claim to history. My archaeologists will go where they go. I like, however, that I do have the visibility. There's the Eiffel Tower. Big tourism boost this turn. We're up to 450. And we got computers. Another 20. So that all lines up really, really well. So now if we go check out some of these national parks, 38 tourism, uh, 35 tourism, 41 tourism, 42 tourism, uh, three tourism? Apparently, pasture. Wait, my pastures are making tourism. I'm baffled. <laughs> what was that part of the um, the patch to fix all all tiles now give tourism? Yeah, I guess all tiles that have culture on them can now get tourism on them. That's kind of that's really neat. I like that change. I'm a big fan of that change. I like that they changed it. That's cool. Um, big fan, big fan, big fan. Uh, so we have computers, we have radio, we have electricity, we have steel. So our tech tree is theoretically completed. The only thing that we're missing is things like sanitation for extra housing, although we don't need it. We went for a very high housing build. Uh, unlocking oil that can be sold to the AI, unlocking uranium that can be sold to the AI. Uh, I think lumber mills get plus one production from somewhere up here. It might be like a post thing. Um, yeah, so I would like to get replaceable parts for farming as well as possible food markets, although I probably won't be building many of those this game. Uh, we're gonna pick up refining as well as combined arms. We have Shrine Temple. We have our Preserve. We're missing missing a place to build our theater squares and stuff. So let me think about that a little bit. Um, man, that is just such a nice... Holy crap. Um, this is just such a nice spot for a national park that I kind of have to just place the pins. The appeal of my empire is absurd. Plus nines and eights everywhere. That's the power of, of America's abilities plus Eiffel Tower. Um, we can actually get another uh, naturalist. Boom. We can get another one in a couple of turns too. Um, now, if I were like, you know, optimizing super hardcore, I would be only building these in places where the exact guy, you know, this is the exact tile where, you know, maximized, optimized, optimus primed, uh, uh, you know, appeal. But you, you know, there's a limit to humanity, okay? I am only a man. I am a good man. I'm a strong man. And according to your wife, I'm a long man, but I am not an infinitely powerful man, okay? There is a limit to my power level. What are you doing, Persia? Genuinely, I, I have a heartfelt message to Persia that uh, speaking as your wife's boyfriend, I think you need to just stop whatever it is you're doing here. You need to get out of here. Uh, okay, so we, we're heading over here. We're popping down a national park. Hello, plus three error score. Boom, 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 boom. We dropped those four and we got ourselves a very happy place. Now, where the hell are we? Why are we still here just to suffer? These are the questions that plague my mind. You know, 
It, it's just, it's... <laughs> That's right, baby. If you, if you had a, it's time for the churn on your bingo card. Bing, 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 bing. You are a winner. Congratulations. You've just won a lifetime supply of memes. Dude, I would actually, dude, if you, if, if a lifetime supply of memes was like an actual option that you could order or like, if you could order it or you could win it from like the lottery, that would actually be an absolutely based prize. Like, here's the thing. People always say that, like, oh, you know, money makes you happy, etc. But, like, how many people, like, genuinely, like, you're, you're, like, put a comment in the chat if your life is just the stuff that gets in the way, like, between you looking at memes. <laughs> come on, like, come on, like, let's be real with each other, okay? <laughs> they say, you know, uh, money can't make you happy. You know what can't make you happy? Memes, okay? When I sit at home and I'm laughing and smiling to myself, I'm feeling good, okay? Now, there is an open question as to whether or not that's an escape and like a, or else it's like a genuinely helpful, you know, thing and like it's actually good for me. Listen, these are questions for philosophers, okay? Do I sound like a philosopher, okay? No, I'm not a philosopher. I'm not a poet unless I'm talking about your mom. Uh, then I get pretty poetic. Um, but we, uh, oh, my Susan tea has been stolen and I didn't notice. Let me just yoink Antananarivo back, getting that juicy six uh, percent culture. I should probably earn more gray people. I kind of, I, 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 you know, I feel like I need, I feel like I need to go watch other people play this game. I, I feel like I, I might be in like a little bit of a Civ Six gameplay bubble where I've been playing the game on my own for so long that like I need to go watch other people beat Deity just to see if I'm missing things because I feel like I, I feel like I understand the game like super deeply and really well. But there is like that little bit of a fear in me that maybe there's something like really good that I missed. But usually you guys point that stuff out to me in the comments. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think I live in a Civ 6 bubble. Do I? No, I think I think you got you guys tend to point stuff out that I get wrong in the comments and then I make adjustments and like you point out stuff that I didn't think of or that I missed. And I think you guys do a pretty good job of keeping me honest and on base, you know, and, and keeping me keeping me in the loop about, you know, certain strategies or whatever, or whatever it may be, whatever is going on. What is, why is this? What is this? Oh, it's a lumber mill. So I, I, for that, I am, I, I actually am really, really, really grateful that you guys are so based on what, uh, that you guys just do such a good, really, really good job of uh, keeping me, keeping me on track with your comments and your likes and your, hey, by the way, this is a YouTube video, okay? You better like it, okay? And I don't mean like, oh, I like this video. I mean like you literally physically scroll down and click that thumbs up button or you know what? I'm not going to take your mom out for dinner. That's <laughs> she, she's cut off. Okay. She's cut off. No more mom dates. <laughs> All right. And you know, she won't make you chocolate milk anymore because she won't be happy. Um, all right. Unit needs orders. Let's go ahead and drop that here. God, it's like a really odd threat. It's a really odd threat. If it actually like is a problem for you that I wouldn't date your mother. This, it feels like the setup for like an 80s coming of age story. Hey, listen, dude, you know, I want to go to this like this music festival, but my mom won't let me go unless she distracted in a relationship. And then like they set up like an elaborate situation to get her mom into a relationship with a guy she probably shouldn't be dating. Um, and then it ends up at the end of the movie. The guy's like, OK, dude, we went to the music festival. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to date my mom anymore. And he's like, what are you talking about, dude? We're married now. <laughs> and We're in love. And then the dude has like set up. And then the rest of the movie is trying to break the mom up with the from the guy who's now dating the dad. I feel like every single scenario that like ends up like that ends up like that, if that makes sense. Like, that's how it always ends. It's like, oh, it's some wacky adventure. We got to like we got to get someone to date someone just for, you know, uh, a dare or whatever. Whereas the reality is, if anybody who's been in a situation on either side of any sort of, you know, uh, romantic exchange that involved like a dare or exchange of value, somebody, the person usually who didn't know about it feels terrible. Okay. It's not like a fun and romantic and beautiful thing. It's like a real betrayal. And like, because you've essentially lied to someone about reality, which is kind of a really shitty thing to do. Um, to like just completely warp the world, the per their perception of the world. Because they were like, oh, dude, I met this person I really, really like. And it turns out that, you know, it was, they were, you know, they were given a six pack of beer to take you to a, to a basketball game or something. I don't know. Listen, I'm just spitballing here because we're in the churn. And sometimes, you know, there, I, I feel like the churn isn't so much a, a state of mind or a phase of the game as it is a way of life. And 
I think every job or every task gets to that point where you're just like, you know what, dude, I'm checked out and I'm, I'm on autopilot completing the last bits of my tasks, but you know, uh, 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 we're done here emotionally, mentally, physically, we're, we're churning. And Hey, you know what? Sometimes the world churns back. Sometimes you're, you're, you're just living your life and you become someone else's churn. And that doesn't feel so good. Uh, let's go ahead and get more archeologists. I, I love this phase of the game, though, because it is the phase of the game that I have like completely like mastered down to the point where I can just autopilot, make every single decision without even really talking about them, um, because I, I just know what I need to do. Uh, because you get to this point, and I used to hate this part of the game when I was when I was younger and less wise. OK, perhaps we might say um, I really hated the phase of the game where all of this, all of the decision making was finished and it was really just about execution but in some sense there's a satisfaction to it all right it's like it's like planing a piece of wood it's like it's like you know uh sanding down a piece of wood in in a sense sure it's grunt work and it's kind of crappy and it's kind of boring and it kind of sucks but also it's it's an expression of the thousands and thousands of hours of work you've put into something and you you have got it down to the point now where you can just go into zen mode and continuously just improve the thing. You don't even really have to think about it. I mean, obviously I'm conscious and I'm paying attention and I'm like looking at what's happening and I'm making sure I don't make any major mistakes, but I don't, I don't need to be present 100% on this because there's not, there's not much stakes on it. Right. Which is nice because there was a lot of stakes early and then I, I got over that hump and now I can just, I can kick back and we're in the relaxing phase of things. Another thing is, is setting your game up, game up properly is kind of important to making progress. I don't want a cultural alliance with her because I want her city to flip me. I will take an economic alliance with her. Because if you think about it, right, a lot of players, they play the game and they'll look like, okay, they'll be like, oh, environmentalism, what do I do next? I know what I'm doing next, okay? I, because I, I already know what's next in the tech tree. All I need is um, social media and that's it, right? I've, so because I've already made that decision like a thousand million times, I never need to make a different one. So there's kind of a familiarity and a comfort there. And that I just, I just know the best way to go about the game. I forget exactly what was the point I was trying to make there. It kind of exited my brain. But I would like to now start to expand here because Rome is starting to expand here. Um, now, this is the best place to produce builders. So I will continue to produce builders there. But maybe in some of these other cities, I might start sending out settlers. Let's go ahead and plug in the settler card. I think I can drop five year plan as good as it is. I think I would rather have the settler production card in. Oh, right. I've got 7,000 gold in the bank. Um, let's come over here to some of these cities and we'll just buy sanctuaries wherever it makes sense. So you, just wherever it makes sense, we'll buy things. Oh, I could totally buy a district here. You know what? Let's buy the water park. That seems kind of like a fun decision. Um, you're already you're finishing your sanctuary. You're already finishing it. You don't need that. I could theoretically get a factory and a coal power plant here. It's not a bad move. Factory coal power plant. I think that's a good use of my gold, actually. Provides power in the area. We got our grove. We got everything in here. So now we're, we're truly cranking. Let's get to work on that theater square, baby. Uh, what's going on here? We got another builder. Did I? Oh, I lost a trade route because of the World Congress. That's why. That makes a lot of sense. So I actually am now running out of projects to use my builders on. Um, which is was a fantastic place to be because it means now I can work on expanding my borders. Because I've, I've achieved the goal of improving all of the tiles. Uh, and we can move on to the next step. Okay, I think I'm Susan of everything I care about. Let's double check. It would be nice to be Susan of Zanzibar. Don't care about that. Fez, I don't have a religion. Vatican City, I don't have a religion. Wolan, eh. Mexico, eh. You know what? Mexico is worth being Susan of. Buenos Aires is worth being Susan of. Mohenjo Daro is worth building a relationship with, but not necessarily being Susan of. So that, that works for me. We're up to 800 culture per turn, by the way. Totally balanced game. You know, welcome to America, by the way. Uh, we're also up to 791 tourism per turn. Things are progressing really, really nicely. You know, I've got an independent, I've got a free city coming to me. Uh, let's be friends with as many people as possible. Now, the only, I think the one of the key things that I'm going to be missing here is the trade route stuff. So I think trade routes are going to become a little bit more important to me now uh, as, as time comes on. N nuclear take, um, you should get a trade route. You should get a trade route for building your diplomatic order buildings because that's like a diplomatic thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. All right. I just, I, it feels appropriate to me or your government pla or your government buildings or something. Uh, so I, there should be more trade routes. There should be tall trade routes. That's, that's something I feel like the game is really missing is tall trade routes. I feel like you should get a free trade route. Um, 
like Merchant Republic. I feel like that should this technology should maybe open up a trade route. I feel like uh, I I feel like there should be like four to five trade routes sprinkled in the tech tree. I feel like there should just just a few. There doesn't have to be like a game changing amount. Just a few trade routes sprinkled into the tech tree. I think would improve things significantly. We do have oil here, and it's a lot of oil. Um, with the preserve fully built, we could theoretically build a zoo. I don't think we need to because you have insane amenities here. Yeah, I need to buy more great works of writing. So let's go into the deals menu. We will purchase great works of writing, preferably. Accept deal, accept deal, accept deal, accept deal. That's all the great works of writing. I would like some great works of art, I think, here. There's a few artifacts going around, but I think I would like... Uh, I could buy relics, I guess, if I really wanted to. But I think, let's let's look at the paintings. I'm going to buy one, two, three paintings. So we're slowly starting to fill these out. I think this is an art museum city. Yeah, for sure. I think there's, there's, there's a tiny bit of place for different things. And I think that's an art museum city. Let's go ahead. We've got our fully built grove in here. Let's get our theater square. Skadoosh, skadoosh, skadoosh. Of course, there's a field cannon over here still near Ire. Just going to shoot my knight. That's my favorite thing. Apparently, I'm still at war with Japan. Can we just, like, undo this? Thank you. Thank you, Japan. I don't even know why he declared war on me, to be honest with you. I got the National History Museum in Aquileia. Now, it's important to remember that anything that goes into Aquileia is um, doubled in value. So, ideally, we want, I think, great works of music to go into there. Um, because if I recall correctly, and this might be a misremembrance, but I'm pretty sure great works of music have the highest baseline yields yeah they're four and four so if i buy two great works of music for three great works of music four great works of music if i buy four great works of music and pop them into my national history museum these are worth yeah they're, they're worth twice as much so that these are worth eight tourism each now um, and i can fit another one in here so yeah that was an expensive thing to do but it's fine uh now talking about the city of Aquileia again i would like the city to continue to grow um, let's get the entertainment complex. Yeah, I need the amenities and then I need the housing from the encampment. So we'll kind of work in that direction. I need settlers. God damn it, I need settlers. Let's get more archaeologists. We've got an amphitheater here. This is an art museum city. Just, you know, I'm making that decision executively. Hold on. Is there flooding happening? There is flooding coming. So let's make sure that we get a flood barrier. You know, get the, get the, I don't want to lose tiles. Okay. I like my tiles. I'm a big fan of tiles. Um, this city does not have a place for a thing, which means, you know what? You're a settler city. Go get me some settlers. All right, it's time. Let's uh, train Magnus with provision and reassign him to Kume. It's quite a new city, so he'll prevent that city from losing population. Ah, uh, yes, lumber mills. Lumber mills, also known as slumber mill, if you play World of Warcraft, you know, you're trying to take a lumber mill. Dude, people do be asleep at LM. You go up there and you try to take it, and dudes literally could have been AFK and you wouldn't know the difference. Like, I'm screaming at chat, dude, ink LM for like five minutes. And like, a rogue appears out of nowhere, immediately gets like feared by a warlock and dies. And that's my only assistance. Now, granted, I am playing shaman. So as long as, you know, as long as I have something like a hunter with me, who I can just pocket, literally invincible, I, like as a duo. Because if they chase me, I just, I ghost wolf and I run away. The hunter slows them. If they go on the hunter, I just go giga chad, omega uh, uh, heal spam, bam, 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 drop totems, slowing, crit, whatever, whatever totems I need to drop, I'll drop them. Uh, God, shaman hunt, I feel like shaman plus one is actually like always a disgusting combination, whether it's shaman plus mage, but I really feel like in PvP, a resto shaman plus some kind of hunter of any persuasion is just gross. It's just, it's actually just horrendous, especially if the hunter is geared, um, because if the hunter is geared, uh, I think I should take Heartbeat of Steam here. Well, let me see. No, no, no. I got to take Wish You Were Here because this gives me 100% tourism from my national parks. So that's going to be a big old swing in the tourism department. Um, yeah, but but like I was saying, um, you know, I, I, I feel like a, uh, a shaman plus a hunter of literally any description um, that is like reasonably well geared can, can honestly take on like four dudes. Um, as long as the shaman doesn't get like immediately focused. If the shaman can stay alive, which notoriously shamans are bad at doing. Although I'm not sure if that says a lot about how strong... Well, see, here's the thing. I give the hunter damage and I bring a lot of utility and the hunter is essentially invincible because I just, I bring so much like 
healing. It's not burst healing, but it's so much sustained healing that the hunt, like if it's a good hunter who's like dodging and weaving and doing all the stuff that he should be doing, you know, it's pretty hard to deal with this. I'm going to take Herit. I want to take a satellite broadcast here. That's 32 extra tourism per turn. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough for it to be worth it. Um, you know, here's a fun thing. We should totally check out some city reports. I'm pretty sure most of my cities. Wow, really? It looks like just a few of my cities are really high in contentedness. I really thought like all of my cities would be super high. I do, um, I do need another national park here. I know this isn't the best national park, but it's a national park, which is kind of just as important as being a good national park. Combined arms is available. We have access to uranium. Saigon will flip in seven turns. Combined arms. What's our next step here? Gold from camps, food from fishing boats. None of this tech really matters, I think. So we'll just kind of do like the, what era are we in? We're in the atomic era. So we'll just kind of do, do the backfill strategy where we just research everything in the atomic era. And then by the time we finish all that, we'll be ready to move on to the next era. It's kind of an efficient, that's like just an efficient way to get everything researched. You don't have to do it. It's not necessary. Um, because essentially decisions in a, decisions from a technology perspective right now for us are kind of pointless. Um, they don't they don't do much for us. Another national park, beautiful. It's got there's something beautiful about executing a plan. It's really satisfying. I love it when a plan comes together. Is the meme I think. Hot take. Too many things are memes nowadays. Okay, the word meme has become a generic term, and it's 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 you know, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I use it all the time inappropriately. Buenos Aires, you are getting dunked on. Cultural alliance, not yet, 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 yet. Uh, okay, so we got an archaeologist. Let's get the film studio. Let's keep on digging them up. Indiana, let's go. Uh, entertainment complex in Aquileia. I think an arena is good. We've got a sanctuary in Charleston. That's quite nice. I feel perhaps that we should continue along that line. This feels like an art museum city. It's just it just has that art museum vibe. You know, you look at it. Sometimes you look at people and you're like, it's an art museum kind of guy. He's, he's an art. He's an art museum kind of guy. And look, there's no shame in being an art museum guy. OK, just, you know, just know that you are an art museum guy. Like, don't try to fight it. You just are an art museum guy. Like, that's who you are. Accept it. Love it. Live it. OK, that's how we should all approach life. Accept it. Love it. Live it. Words to live by. In fact, if I was a philosopher, those be, those be the opening statement, the opening statement of my thesis on reality. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine me writing a book? I actually, I would really like to write a book one day. Uh, Research Alliance with Scotland. That seems based on what? Um, I would really like to write a book one day. What I would love to do is write a fantasy book. And the kind of idea I had is to basically steal everyone else's good ideas and then try to make it my own. <laughs> kind of like what I did with my YouTube channel. Uh, St. Louis is kind of dangerously low on protection. Um, here, take this, a field cannon that'll raise your city's rent to a reasonable level. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel like all of the best art, like, here's the thing. Why, I think one of the big mistakes that people make when they go into a genre of, or, or into a, a craft or a, or insert word here that represents, um, some productive thing that people do. Okay. When you're taking up a task, a, 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 a sort of a thing, a, a, you know, God, what is the word I'm looking for? A, um, not a craft, not a task, not a, like an art form, whatever it is that you're doing. When you're taking up a thing, when you're doing a thing, okay, when you want to do thing good, okay, the instinct that people have is to, like, I don't want to do things like everyone else does. It. I want to do my way. But here's the thing. You don't know shit, all right? That's the second paragraph of my philosophy book, okay? It's, it's, Live, live life and accept it and love it. Okay. Paragraph two, you don't know shit. <laughs> okay. You don't know why things are the way they are. Okay. Until you know why things are the way they are, you can't deconstruct them and make something new. Okay. You, people think they see like these amazing artists go up and they're like, oh my God, this dude broke all the rules. Yeah. He knew all the rules. That's why he could break them. Okay. You don't even know the rules. You don't even know the rules to break them, okay? How are you going to break the rules if you don't goddamn know them, okay? You're not going to be Mozart if you don't know how to play classical music like Mozart and every other classical musician to a level of perfection that approaches insanity. Um, anyway, that's my hot take. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe there are people out there, okay? Here's the thing. Third paragraph. <laughs> The third paragraph of my philosophy book. You are not exceptional. 
Okay? You are not exceptional. Now, you may be exceptional, and you may believe yourself to be exceptional. But here's the thing. Most people aren't exceptional. Okay? Most people are just average. They're okay. You're all right. There's nothing wrong with you. Nothing wrong with being not exceptional. But there's very few people who are genuinely exceptional. And if you think you're exceptional, you might be right. But you're probably better off acting like you're not exceptional. Now, we do want online communities here because that's a 50% tourism boost to every save. So if you think about it, this upgrades my 2.5% tourism boost from having trade routes with people to being a 75 tourism boost from having trade routes with people. Like, that's a total boost. So this is actually a pretty good card because it scales across my empire. So I'm going to go ahead and replace Vissel Banking with that. Yeah, anyway. Um, now, here's the thing. You should think you are exceptional. But that does not mean that you are exceptional, okay? I think I'm a pretty exceptional person, right? I have a certain way about me. I have a certain demeanor. I have, a, I have certain things about me. Now, another, in many ways, I'm an incredibly mundane person, okay? I'm incredibly straightforward and um, unimpressive in many, 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 many ways, okay? But I'm, I, I also personally feel that I am exceptional, not in like a delusional, oh, I'm better than everyone kind of way, but like I feel that there is something about me that has like a that quality and power and value that, you know, I think... I would like to express in the world. And I think it's important to have that feeling about yourself. But that doesn't mean that you are exceptional. You can feel you're exceptional. It doesn't mean that you are the thing. Okay, I can feel like I'm Santa Claus. It doesn't mean I'm Santa Claus, okay? That's the difference, okay? How you feel about yourself does impact how you act in the world. But you have to be careful. You have to, kinda, you have to play that game very carefully. Now, uh, where's my next national park going? I like this one down here in Mediolanum. Let's go ahead and grab that one, naturalist. Uh, no. So in order to fix that, I need to put a tile improvement there and then remove that tile improvement. Uh, I forget what I was saying. Maybe it's because I'm not exceptional. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, listen, at this point, you're listening to a talking potato on the internet. Why would you take anything that I say seriously? Like, what is, like, what is wrong with you? Okay, if you're watching my video, <laughs> here's how you can tell you're not exceptional. <laughs> As if you're watching my videos. <laughs> <laughs> exceptional people do other things with their time no i'm just kidding uh like i mean there's probably like listen every single one of you guys is special and you know what you guys are so special that you have just such a power in your heart to scroll down on my video and click that like button click that subscribe button and there's really exceptional people out there click the join button and become a member of my channel App, like those people, those people are exceptional. Like you want to hear about exceptional people, the people who like choose to spend real money on 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 other people's <laughs> jobs so that I can continue to make YouTube videos and avoid any real sense of, of responsibility in my life. But yeah, look, uh, you know, uh, things are going well. That's 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 the conclusion to that that sentence there. As things are going well, you know, we're making. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like the where, the where, the why, the how. Why is it going there? This is just clearly a superior one. So we shall wait for a fix. A dent. Really? You want me to put a mine on the uranium? No thanks, dude. Uranium not to be proliferated, okay? We're in the we're in the, the tile non-proliferation treaty. We don't we don't proliferate tiles. All tiles will be just woods. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that rant. Here's the thing. I I don't know shit. That's paragraph four. <laughs> wait, no, that was already paragraph three. Listen, if I ever write a philosophy book, it'll be a jumbled mess of lessons I've learned that'll be absolutely of no use to anybody who reads it because unfortunately, people are dumb and have to learn those lessons themselves. That's that's the, the that's paragraph 5. It's like you will read this and believe none of it. Okay? I could tell I could literally give you the secrets to the universe and none of you would act upon it. None of you. I could tell you exactly how to live your life in the most perfect beautiful way in that you would maximize your happiness in, in every single category you would have maximum like relationship happiness maximum personal happiness maximum psych psychological happiness you would have every single category tick 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 the boxes okay and you probably still wouldn't do it because and some people claim it's because you want to be miserable no it's not that it's just that you know it's a lot of work okay we're creatures of habit once we've dug a groove it's hard to get out of it that's 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 all it is. It's just once you have that groove, it's hard to get out of the groove. Okay, don't feel bad about it. Okay, it's it's a lot of work to change a habit. That's why you got to change them one by one. You take one habit, or you do them all at once, and you dedicate your entire life to changing it. That's another way to do it. Um, that's that's a lot harder.
Um, that takes a lot. It's, it's quite a privileged thing to be able to do if you can do it. But if you can do it, it's probably good for you. Which is why people advocate for small little changes, little incremental changes that give you the time to acquire the knowledge to reinforce those incremental changes. I feel like a lot of a lot of life is just a lot of effort, man. That's the big problem. It's like, can we just get like, can we get an easy mode for life? Like, I want my difficulty level to go down, like just a notch. Or, like sometimes you wake up a day. I, you know what? That would actually be a really good thing for society. Is if you're just, if you're having a rough day, you should be able to like, I don't know, wear like a hat or, or, you know, turn an app on on your phone that just like is like people will get money if they're nice to you <laughs> if you're just having a bad it's like listen dude i'm on easy mode today i can't i listen your tps reports you gotta get someone else to do that i just i listen i'm on easy mode today i can't handle it i feel like i feel like that would be a, an improvement to society so saigon will f flip next turn to me which is helpful um we've got settlers moving out across the coast and i've also got a crossbowman or two probably making their way over there so we can get a bit of an idea about what's actually going on over here in the east. Yeah, I mean, does anyone else feel like that? Like sometimes you're just you're just not you're just not happy. You're just not with it. You're just you're having a bad day. You know, your wife's boyfriend gave you bad news. Whatever it is that's causing you an issue, you just you need easy mode that day. And so I feel like you should have the well, not maybe not the right, but you should have the option to be like, hey, I'm on easy mode. Let me just leave me alone. I don't want to hear nothing about no war. I don't want to hear nothing about famine, plague, or anything like that. I need positive vibes today because I, I, the world is too much. But then again, on the other side of things, I think, you know, here we go, okay? I'm morphing into a boomer, okay? Right now. Right live in front of your eyes. I think on the flip side of that, there are people out there who live their lives on easy mode. Those people, if, if you spot somebody who's living their life on easy mode too much. Like, if you're wearing that easy mode badge too much, there should people who be able to... No, no, motherfucker. You're going on hard mode today. You're getting hard, You're learning all the bad stuff. People are going to be not rude, but really assertive and strong and, like, just push, like pushing back upon your bullshit. Because, uh, dude, I... There are some people out there that, like, have lived life on so, like, easy mode to a degree, okay? A sheltered, easy mode life where no nothing has ever challenged them. In any capacity and like they are so fragile and it's 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 a chore to deal with them because you feel like you're I, you're tiptoeing on I, like people talk about eggshells it doesn't even feel like eggshells because eggshells have a crunch to them it feels like you're walking on like sea foam like this person's ego can't even handle a, a, like a light disagreement about the facts of a matter why can't I put a preserve here I want to put a preserve right there I need to swap the tile that makes sense yeah I'll put a preserve right there um yeah but what was I saying yeah, I don't know. Like, like, like yeah, I, I feel like, you know, if we're, in, if we're implementing the easy mode of life, there needs to be, like, the enforced hard mode. Like, listen, mother effer, you've had it too easy, okay? You're getting a hard day today. And I think that would help a lot in equalizing society. Like, how good would it feel if some, like, uh, like person is just being a total turd at, like, your drive through job, okay? And, you know, you get one of these a month, say. And they've just been a total jerk to you. And you just know, you just know this person. Damn, they, they need a hard mode day. And you could just whip out that app, point it at them. And, and they're just there. Now they got a hard, now they got to do like, I don't know, some, like whatever their worst nightmare is, whatever area of their life that I've never been challenged in, they will be now challenged in that. Okay. If this, they will have to work like a day in a service job or something, right? If they've been moon, mean to a service worker, they maybe they'll have to work a week. I like and that, and then you could also get people to team up. Like if some if some customer just keeps coming back and being an absolute tool, oh, then you could just team up and be like, all five of you guys who work behind the counter, boo, 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 you aim that app at them, and you just boom. Now this person's in for like a month. All right, this person's been such a colossal tool that they're they're in for for the school of hard knocks for a month. I I think this would genuinely improve society. Uh, please vote for me. <laughs> Under no circumstances should any of my policy prescriptions should ever be implemented, ever. Literally ignore everything I say. Unless it's about Civ. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to Civ. Um, but I, I really like it, uh, where we are in the game right now. Because if we, if we let's take a, take a moment, to, let's, let's, let's recline a little bit. We're making 1,500 tourism per turn. Now remember, we're getting double tourism from national parks. So some of these national parks are making like 100 tourism per turn. So we should be making on the order of nine tourists. Like if we look at this guy, we're making nearly two tourists per turn from him. We're making nearly two from her, two from, well, one and a half-ish from him, one and a half from you. One and a half, not even one. He hates me. Two from you, one from you. 
yeah, we're 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 cranking. Now the problem is Wilfred Laurier just has so much culture. It's a bit of a problem. We can't really undo it. So we just need we need to just like go vertical and make more and more tourism to outpace him intellectually. Um, w will it work? I don't know. I actually don't know. I think we have about a t I think we have a turn limit of about another eighty turns before the game goes pear shaped on me because it's usually around turn three hundred and twenty to three hundred and forty. That's when the AI tends to actually like physically like end the game. So I've got that long to uh, to get things into the bag. And uh, sometimes, you know, you put the cat in the bag and the cat don't want to come out of the bag. I dig where I please, thank you. Rocketry, quarries, okay, nice. We've got our film studios. Our tourism continues to climb, um, which is fantastic, fantastic. Now I'm trying to think about, what do I do in New York to help my empire? I think it's settlers. Boom, 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 boom. More settlers. Yeah, I'm running out of tiles to improve now, so. Operation Build More Builders worked. Perhaps a little bit too well. Perhaps a little bit too well. All right, Washington. It's got its theater square. It's got its preserve. It's got its entertainment complex. I guess theoretically we could get a commercial hub in here for the extra trade route. The extra trade route might represent an extra boost in the amount of uh, tourism stuff we can pick up. Uh, I should probably now, before people start hating me, I should totally look to purchase more great works uh, while I have room. So I'm just going to yoink all the great works of music I can grab. There we go. We've got a whole bunch of great works of music to fill out these film studios. That's fantastic. I have room for more art as well. Uh, let's have a look here. Purchase great works of... Uh, let's get portraits. Two, three. There we go. Three more great works of art. And I think I would also like to buy... What else do I need? Ah, I need to sell things, probably. Just sell off like a little bit of these. Just to make up for the fact that I've sold off the majority of my economy. I should probably also sell off a thousand Diplo favor, 200 gold per turn. It's a little bit less than I had last time, uh, but man, look at all the great works. I think I also want to sell off my strategics. So that's kind of a process of doing this. Now there's people out there that want to buy my uranium and they can have it because I do not need my uranium. All right, so now if I come in here and I refresh my eco, I bought a lot of stuff, but I sold enough to make up for it. Uh, more archaeologists are coming free now. Be good to get open borders with Rome. I need to remember to get open borders with people because remember, again, that's a 2.5% increase in my total tourism if I can get open borders with people. Open borders with Canada, open borders with Coupe. Basil hates me. Persia will probably give me open borders. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just got like four or five open borders, which is like a 10% increase in my tourism per turn. Um, now, culture victory. I am ahead of Canada. He's making 280 culture per turn. I'm making 1,500. And I'm making way more culture than him. I should actually start being culturally dominant over some people. Uh, you must become culturally dominant. How do I... So I think... There's cultural dominance. Cultural dominance does a thing. It's a fairly new addition to the game because it, it, it came late into the game's thing. Uh, so trade routes to cities that you dominate, 25% more. Ooh, and your citizens exert 25% more pressure. Ah, spy missions. Okay. Cultural dominance has some relevance here. Uh, archaeologists. I'm running out of things to dig up. So I probably, well, I already did cultural heritage. So a lot more art museums probably. Because pretty soon people will stop selling me their great works. Now in the city of Aquileia, I really don't want to, um, I really don't want to reduce the city's population because Pingala is established there and it's like a pretty big city in terms of culture for me. But more importantly, um, the stadium I think gets extra scaling. I think I would also like to build a neighborhood in here at some point. There's a plus four. There's a plus six right there. It's a pretty good plus six. I'll take this plus six. I'm playing America, so basically every tile should be a plus six. Uh neighborhood for me oh yeah i'm culturally dominant over rome so i'm just getting like all those memes um more national parks over here i need a road you know what i need i need like a couple i need a couple of uh railroad builders give me those military engineers i need like three of them because i need railroads over here because it's just taking way too long to move citizens but yeah i'm gonna call that the end of this episode i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye